what we want to completely throw away when it comes to our social media strategy moving forward. So please give a giant Social West welcome to Tessa Maymar. And an extra applause for the suit. Today, with a mixture of relief and amusement, we gather to bid adieu to a platform that has had us hooked, liked, and occasionally enraged. It's time to raise our glasses and say farewell to our beloved bluebird. Oh, the hours we enjoyed with you over the years. You gave us hashtag wars, where battles were fought over the most pressing matters like Team Yanni versus Team Laurel. And who could forget the infamous Kofefe incident? that left us all scratching our heads and questioning the sanity of the world. You were a digital jungle, home to keyboard warriors and meme enthusiasts alike. From viral challenges that had us eating detergent pods, not recommended, to countless threads on the proper way to eat a pineapple pizza, you never failed to entertain us with your bizarre trends. But alas, even the mightiest must fall. Those that knew you and loved you saw you deteriorate over the years. The only time you get any action these days is when Slack is down or Instagram won't load. Your trolls grew bolder, the echo chambers louder, and the fake news rampant. It became clear that this digital experiment had spiraled out of control, leaving us longing for a return to simpler times when cat videos and baby pictures reigned supreme. And hey, there's no shame in that. It was simply your time to go. Today, the curtain falls on your grand performance, and it's time for us to find a new stage for our digital exploits with higher character counts and better algorithms. Rest in peace, Twitter. <clears throat> My name is Tessa Maymar, and I hate Twitter. <laughs> Please don't tell Mike Morrison, because I think he will disagree. <clears throat> I started working in, oh, sorry, just kidding. Nope. Love when this happens. I'm missing a slide. OK, we're just going to roll with it. It's fine. I started working in social media way back in 2012, and one of the first brands that I worked on, our primary platform was Twitter. Shocker. Um, and honestly, it was good back then. I was a fan. I was living in Calgary at the time, then she was mayor, um, and he made Twitter really cool for Calgarians. Nowadays, we're used to seeing tweets from politicians, obviously, but back then, it, he was a bit of a pioneer around that, and Calgarians were here for it. And yeah, it got us results. We built a really big community there. It continued to be our top performer. And then in 2014, Okay, in 2014, I started my agency, Mar Media Group. Twitter was still relevant back then as well, especially for B2B brands. Uh, but over the years, I would say through the celebrity tweet wars and Trump's antics and then the eventual takeover by Elon Musk, um, all coupled with the rise in popularity of photo and video content, a lot of brands and a lot of people have just decided to kind of abandon ship and ditch Twitter altogether. So Twitter is where we're going to start today. And I want to start by hearing from all of you in this room. This is going to be interactive because it's the middle of the afternoon from day one. Um, who is currently using Twitter for their business or brand? Hands up. OK, quite a few. And who here is using Twitter personally? OK, less. Interesting. <clears throat> so what we're seeing in terms of the statistics around this is that things are on the decline. About 43% of marketers are saying that they are using Twitter um, right now for their business or brand. So I'd say that's a well, it might have been a little higher in here, but I mean, Calgary has a big Twitter presence, so that's fine. Um, are using it to promote their business. We're seeing declines in revenue at Twitter. We're seeing declines in web traffic. Uh, but it's not all bad news. I mean, clearly, you saw the hands go up. There are still people on Twitter. I technically still have an account, I think. Um, so who is on Twitter right now? If we actually look at the stats, this surprised me, personally. Gen Z is actually the biggest demographic on Twitter, and that is growing. So that's kind of interesting. So I would say, you know, from an agency perspective, what we're seeing with our clients is those brands that are investing in Twitter, the results we're getting aren't astounding anymore. Um, it's not something we recommend a ton. So I'd say at this point in time, it's not a shoe in for your social media strategy in 2023, but obviously if it aligns for you in terms of your demographic and who you're trying to reach, go for it, give it a try. We can agree to disagree. So next on the shopping block here is a LinkedIn. So how many people in the room are using LinkedIn for their brand or business? 
large amount, okay? And how many people are using LinkedIn personally? Okay, about the same. So what we see in terms of stats for LinkedIn is really high numbers. 96% um, of B2B marketers are using LinkedIn, and as you can see, they're getting great results from that. We would echo that as well um, to say that pretty much, I would say all of the brands that are in B2B space, um, certainly we're investing in LinkedIn, and we're seeing amazing organic results there. Uh, there's a lot of different strategies you can try there, and I'll get more into that later in my presentation. Um, <clears throat> something to consider here, I mean, the question on the screen obviously was, is LinkedIn just for B2B? It's a no-brainer for B2B. For B2C, I think it's less relevant for sure, but as you can see here, LinkedIn is a massive place for hiring and recruiting. So if you're working at a B2C company that is looking to grow or recruit, then it might be something that you want to marry into your strategy a little bit, and you want to think about that ahead of, ahead of the moment when you actually want to go and hire. So something to think about. How about Facebook? Is Facebook still cool? How many in the room are using Facebook for your brand or business? Okay, and how many people are using Facebook personally? Okay, I mean, not shocking, we have a lot of social media users here. So is Facebook still cool? The answer is no, Facebook is not cool anymore. <laughs> Come on. However, Facebook is still useful, so I really wanna drive that home. Um, the things that I want, to pay, want you to pay attention to on this slide is the who and the how. So who's using Facebook and how are they using it? Um, interesting, or not interesting, not surprising, I should say. The demographic, anyone over the age of 34, if that's who you're targeting, they're probably on Facebook. Um, I also, the, the usage in terms of Facebook is a lot of like connecting with friends and families, sometimes customer service for brands. I know this is how I keep in touch with my grandmother, who's in her 80s. Um, so it's still relevant, unless you're targeting teenagers. Probably skip Facebook, I would say it's safe to say. The other thing that I think is really, really key here is people are buying on Facebook. And this is something we see all the time. We do a ton of meta ads for our clients, and I would say 100% of the time, Facebook is outperforming Instagram in terms of results. <clears throat> Which is interesting, because I think for a lot of those clients, if we're looking at like engagement and community building and brand building, Instagram is winning, for sure. But when it comes to actually getting the results through ads, Facebook every single time. So I think you know, if that's something that you want to lean into, if you want to look, explore paid and try and you know, sell conversion ads or do email acquisition ads or something like that, really consider Facebook as part of your strategy in that case. So what about Instagram? How many people in the audience are using Instagram for their brand or business? Okay, the most. And how many people are using Instagram personally? Um, yeah, so the results are an exact reflection of this space. Instagram is currently the number one downloaded app in the world, uh, which is wild, and uh, among the top 10 websites globally as well, which is amazing. Uh, brands that invest here are also seeing growth, approximately 1% uh, month over month, which is impressive, and nearly half of the adults in um, the US, I don't have a Canadian stat, are, are on, on Instagram. So it's got a ton of relevance. It's a number one platform out there for sure. I would say that we're seeing the same thing at the agency. It is rare that we're not recommending an Instagram presence as part of your strategy for the brands that we work with. It's more relevant for B2C than it is for B2B, but I think across the board these days, it, it holds, uh, holds its own and holds its relevance for sure. So I would highly recommend making sure that Instagram is still part of your strategy for 2023. So how about TikTok? <clears throat> so I expect a little bit different answers. Uh, so how many of you are using TikTok for your brand or business? Okay, look around. Not very many. And how many of you are using TikTok personally? Okay, more. Okay. So TikTok is very polarizing um, and a super interesting one for us to look at in 2023. Um, one of the things that I noticed here with these stats is this platform drives the most engagement of any of the other platforms right now, which is incredible. Um, I know Vinod was talking a little bit about creators and working with them, and if you're creating content for that reason, TikTok is an awesome place to look at. This is a stat in the corner that the average user spends 96, 96 minutes on TikTok per day. Slightly terrifying. What is the above average user doing? I'd be curious to know. Um, and the other thing to note here too is that TikTok is driving purchases. So in this stat, it's a lot of off-app purchases, so something to keep in mind if you're working in social and you're trying to justify the results that you're getting through TikTok. Make sure that you're monitoring for trends that you might not be able to directly attribute because probably you're having a bigger impact than you realize. So that's all the good stuff. On the flip side of things, however, 
34% of adults say they have a negative opinion about TikTok. And then, I don't know if you've seen the news, but over 30 states are actually taking action to ban TikTok as well. So those are some of the headlines that are giving people pause. You know, is this a platform worth investing in? The other kind of challenge with TikTok, I suppose, is that creating content on TikTok can be a heavy lift. And it's not wrong. But I would say the trends that we're seeing across the board are it's worth it. Um, there's a lot of interesting strategies. Um, Nicole Vinod again, his session there was you know, just around how you can employ TikTok, uh, a TikTok content strategy utilizing influencers or your customer base or something like that. So try and think outside the box with it. And if you know, it's probably the second most recommended platform for us right now. Um, so definitely something I would say when it comes to the data, definitely to consider. And you know, watch the headlines, we'll see what happens. Pinterest. <clears throat> it's Pinterest just for women. We've all heard this. How many in this room are using Pinterest for your brand or business? Okay, very few. And how many are using Pinterest personally? Okay, interesting. So is Pinterest just for women? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. There's a few problems with this assumption that I really want us to hone in on. Uh, number one, yes, okay, we can see here that 75% of the users are identifying as female and 25% as male. So it's easy to say, okay, yeah, it's mostly women, fine. But then we're writing off the fact that that 25% rep rep represents 100 million men that are using Pinterest. So as a marketer, like, that's a pretty big number. I don't think I would just write that off. The other problem with this data is it is not taking into account gender diversity. So what about people that don't identify as female or male or into one of those categories? I think as marketers in 2023, we really need to push ourselves to think beyond the basic demographic categories and make assumptions about how our audience wants to receive content based on that. So if you're thinking about Pinterest, it could be a great option for you. I would definitely not limit yourself to what it's become famous for, I suppose. Uh, Pinterest is still one of the greatest search engines out there. It's really great for top of funnel marketing. So if that makes sense for your funnel, um, something to consider. The other good thing about Pinterest is that the trends last 21% longer, I think, 21% longer on Pinterest. So anyone that works in social media knows that it's exhausting to try and keep up with the trends all the time. And like the minute you create something great, it's, it's irrelevant again and you have to go back to the drawing board. So the Pinterest, when you invest, it lasts a little longer, which is kind of nice for us every once in a while. So what about YouTube? Is YouTube making a comeback? <clears throat> Who here uses YouTube for brand or business? And how many of you use, to use YouTube personally? Okay. So is YouTube making a comeback? I mean, I would answer that question with a question. Do we think YouTube ever really left? I feel like certainly the conversations we've been having with clients and, uh, and internally, YouTube has been less talked about in the last three to five years. But how much of that is just because of the popularity of Reels and TikTok and all those other shiny objects that are showing up for us right now? I think when we look at it, I mean, and I mean, YouTube has now rolled out um, Shorts, which I'm really excited to see how that comes into play. They're getting competitive. And when we look at some of the projected data, the, the usage of, of YouTube is growing. So something to consider. The other piece is, I think YouTube was maybe more of a challenge back in the day when brands weren't always investing in video. We were kind of like, well, it's, yeah, it's video's king, but like, who has time and money to do it? Nowadays, video's like, we're all, we're all hopefully using video in some way, shape, or form at this point in time, so we kind of have no excuse not to use YouTube. Uh, YouTube's super powerful as well because obviously it's um, indexed with Google, so your searchability on YouTube is fantastic. And I'd say like, if, you're, if part of your funnel um, involves educating your audience before you're ready for them to make a purchase, YouTube is definitely something to consider. So, that was all the data. Now we're gonna play a little game. I've been to many conferences and I know this time slot you're like tired and your eyes are glazed over and data's great and I'll send you all this after if you want and we can talk about it. But I wanna keep the energy up. So we're gonna have some fun. <clears throat> we're gonna play a little game called Social Media, Keep, Kill, or Tweak in 2023. So I need your involvement, and it's super informal. You can just yell and shout out what you think. I'm gonna go through probably like 25-ish different tactics that you probably have seen before. Some might be a little cringe. And I just want you to shout out if in 2023 you think we should keep, kill, or tweak it, and we'll talk about it. Cool. Okay. Number one, buying followers. Keep, kill, or tweak. Thank God you guys said that. 
I wanted to start with an easy one to break the ice. <clears throat> Please don't be buying followers. I feel like this is probably outdated by at least a few years by now, but if this is something that you're even considering, please let me be the person to tell you to stop. The platforms and algorithms have done a very good job at, um, at trying to find ways to punish you for this. So if it, was, if it was a question in your mind, please just move on. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, kill. <laughs> so what about sales posts? So promoting your product or service on social media. Keep, kill, or tweak? Keep, Okay, I heard some keeps and some tweaks. So I'm gonna say tweak. I absolutely believe that as a marketer of a business, a business owner, whatever the case may be, you are entitled to talk about your product and service and what you do, that's fine. You are here to sell at the end of the day. The reason we wanna call this out as tweak is gone are the days of broadcasting and like trying to shove something down someone's throat. That's not what social media is for. So what we recommend with our clients is about a 75-25 split. No more than 25% of the time should you be talking about or promoting your product or service. 75% um, of the time, you need to be offering value in some other way. So that could be entertainment, that could be connection, that could be education, there's so many different ways that you can do it. So yes, continue sales posts, um, maybe keep some of them in ads, ads is a great place for your sales posts, and your organic strategy, no more than 25%. How about video content? I feel like I gave this away. Thank you. We're definitely gonna keep video content in 2023. If anything, it's on the rise. Um, I, I've said enough about video, let's move on. <clears throat> How about closed captions? Keep killer tweak. Keep. Okay, unanimous. Definitely keep, and for more than one reason. So obviously accessibility, a major component here. You want your content to be able to be consumed. Uh, you're taking time to create video, and a lot of people are either potentially hard of hearing, so that could be a challenge for them to actually consume. As well, I don't have the exact stat, but it's a staggering amount of people that consume video content with no sound. Like, an insane amount. So operating with the assumption that people are not gonna hear the audio on your track, and you really have no excuse to not do this these days. There's like a ton of apps and tools out there that make this really easy for you, so absolutely closed captions every single time. Hashtags, keep killer tweak. Tweak, okay. I would agree, tweak. Uh, so my reasoning for this is hashtags, definitely still relevant. We're not outlawing hashtags, at least anytime soon, I don't think. Uh, but what we want to do is be really thoughtful about our hashtags in 2023. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach anymore. You can't just build a bank at the beginning of your strategy and expect to just post those 30 hashtags on repeat with every single post that you share. That's not going to work. Um, I would highly recommend you explore with hashtags a lot. Mix up the amount that you're using per post. Mix up the types that you're using. Uh, play with the popularity of the hashtags, and then most importantly, make sure that you're checking back on your analytics to see what hashtags are driving results, because testing is all well and good, and you can say, yeah, no, I, I mix it up all the time, and so what's the impact of that? If you can't answer the question, you're not doing anything, you know, you're not adding any value, so definitely do them, but definitely make sure you're experimenting with them. How about pre-scheduled content? Keep killer tweak. Thank God you also keep. I don't think my agency would be very happy with me if I said to outlaw this. We would all have a rough life. Uh, Pre-scheduled content is great for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it really allows you to get creative and thoughtful as a marketer. You can plan further ahead. There's been a ton of uh, conversations about the power of collaborations, and this is a great way to do that. You have the time to build something really magical. Um, and then what also this does is creates capacity for you to be reactive. So there are going to be things on social media that come up. You know, we're always going to have those like viral Oscars moments or whatever, where it's awesome for your brand to be able to jump in. Or, you know, God forbid something goes awry and there's a communications issue and you have to respond really quickly. This will allow for that. You know, it also allows you to be really strategic with like when you're sharing, time of day, um, all of those different things that you can only gather through data and it's not just posting when I remember to. So please reschedule. Quotes and testimonials. Keep killer tweak. I feel like it was a less confident keep, but I heard it. <clears throat> We're going to say keep. I know that like we've all seen this for years, and it's not particularly sexy maybe, but I'm a data geek, and the data tells me that this works. It is a way for you to get someone else to tell your story and like, do the selling for you, so it's something to consider. When and if, you can get a video testimonial. Way better. We can combine a couple of these great tactics. Uh, but if not, it's a great way to showcase your brand as well, especially if you have like a you know cohesion brand cohesive feed and you really want to pay attention to that, you know, mix these in. How about memes and gifs? Keep killer tweak. Keep. Okay. 
please keep. This is my absolute personal favorite thing about social media. Like, it makes me laugh out loud, and I love seeing brands get involved in this. I know we sometimes get pushback from clients of being like, no, that's not really our brand, and we're like, too professional for that, whatever. <clears throat> and I always try and say like, okay, yes, but your brand on social media is who your brand is at a cocktail party. It's okay to have a little fun and let your hair down sometimes. This, social media is not your brand at a board meeting. This is your brand at a cocktail party with like one or two, maybe three drinks kind of a thing. So encourage them if they're not doing it. It's a great way to have some fun and, um, and delight your audience. How about behind the scenes content or like meet the team content? Good, you're so smart, you don't need me. <clears throat> Definitely keep this. We get a lot of pushback from clients who are like, ooh, cringe, I don't wanna get my face on the camera, that's too awkward. Or hey, we're a B2B brand, we're only on LinkedIn, why would you need to see what's happening in our office? Totally disagree. The data tells us people love connecting with people and seeing what's up with the faces behind the brand. So I would say in most occasions, Really look at how you can weave this into your strategy. It'll have a huge impact. We actually had, quick story, time. We actually had one um, client who they had a key hire, and he said in his uh, interview, the only, like, the, the deciding reason that he decided to join the company was because of the team's LinkedIn presence and how personable they were and authentic. And he was like, I just, I already knew the culture and I knew I was a fit. So we're like, yeah, see, nail it. <clears throat> how about polished and professional content? Keep killer tweak. Good, good. We're gonna say tweak here, and I, only because if you have access to amazing photographers and videographers who can create really polished content for you, keep using them, absolutely. That's totally fine. This, there's nothing wrong with this content, it's beautiful. Um, I just don't want it to hold anybody back. At this day and age, you can get a ton of traction from really authentic iPhone shot content that's rough around the edges, and it's fine. Um, so if this is something you think is like a must for you, I would say no. If it's something that you're doing already or want to continue to do or try, absolutely. Okay, so what about filters? Keep, kill, or tweak? Kill. I think I heard mostly kill. Now I want to do another poll. So internally, when we were putting together this presentation, my agency had some debate about like, okay, well, let's make sure we all agree, obviously, on what we're recommending. And this was really polarizing. So we're going to say tweak only because some people say keep and some people say kill. I don't think anyone actually said tweak. <clears throat> but it's how, it's how we agreed. So the gen, so I'm a millennial. For me, I'm like, absolutely, I love a good filter. <laughs> I, love, I love the brand cohesion that you get from it. I love how polished it makes your content look. I'm a yes, for sure. The Gen Zers in the room were like, hell no. The blurrier, the better. Like, they're teaching me how to take these, like, zoomed out shots and apparently photo dumps and all these things. So I'm saying tweak because ultimately, you're gonna have to decide for you. I would say, ask yourself, who is your demographic, if it's me? <laughs> Maybe add some filters. I like filters. Um, and if it's a Gen Z, the raw the better. Be real. I, I mean, I do use be real. I do use be real. Just to connect with my kids mostly. But. Um, okay, how about aligning with social causes on social media? Interesting. Okay. We're going to say tweak. And my reasoning behind this is that social media has gotten a really bad rep for being performative. Um, so I think. Absolutely, hell yes, as a company, figure out what social causes you alignment, align with, sorry. But don't leave that decision to the social media manager. No slide to the social media manager, they're amazing, but like, in this case, you're representing a really big, important thing about this company, and the leadership team should really be the one, or whoever internally should really be the one to decide what causes you're gonna align with, and what causes you're gonna align with offline. Because in my opinion, your online presence should just reflect your online offline presence. If you are just posting to post and like, get some eyeballs and, and join a trend, don't do it. People know it, they see right through it, and it puts a bad taste in their mouth. So do it, but be really um, intentional about what you do it for. How about carousel posts? Keep, I'm sorry. Definitely keep them. I'd say their video and carousel posts, I would say, are the top performing content that we're seeing right now. Uh, carousel posts are great for a couple different reasons. Number one, if you have a piece of content that you wanna share, we have a, a client that works in the beauty industry, so she loves to do before and afters. We don't really want the befores in her feed, you know, it's not the best look. So we'll put a graphic in front of that, and then you can swipe to see the before. So it's a great way to hide content that might not fit with the brand the way that you want it to, but you do think it's valuable. In addition to this, um, you're actually sharing up to 10 photos, and Instagram doesn't necessarily just 
show your primary photo in, in people's feeds. They'll show any photo that's, that the person that's seeing it is most likely to engage with. So you're creating like 10 times more possibility that your content will be shown to someone. So I highly, highly recommend carousel posts. How about long form captions? Keep kill tweet? Kill. Lots of kills, okay. Casey, my chief creative officer also was like, kill, please kill. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm gonna say keep them. <laughs> it's a data thing. What I will say, however, is please don't do this with every caption. Like that's overkill, absolutely. Um, but when, I mean, social media is born from storytelling. When you take the time in the right moment to, to share that story through a caption, it can be quite compelling. That's, that's what the data tells me. Um, so do it, do it sparingly though. And I'm obviously where, where it makes sense. How about multi-grid posts? Keep kill, tweet kill. Okay, I think I heard mostly kills. We're gonna say tweak. This is another one that there was great debate amongst the team. In general, I would say our, say our team is like, please avoid carousel posts at all costs. Like we're not a big yes for them. There's a lot of challenges with them. Um, but sometimes they can work well, I suppose. Like use them very sparingly if you're going to use them at all and save them for like really big announcements. The other thing that I will say is please, if you're going to use a carousel post, think it through or sorry, not a carousel post, a multi-grid post, think it through. Each of your quadrants, so your like single post, please don't make it like a blurry elbow that you can't tell what it is. Like make it make some sense to the user so they don't think it was like your account got hacked. And absolutely have a call to action in the caption to tell them to go see the full post. Because I see these sometimes and I'm like, what is this, this is a disaster. Like you're not even telling me what to do with this garbage that you're sharing. And the other thing I would preface is if you're going to do it, and we had a client that we had to do this for recently and they were like hell bent on it. We said, okay, fine, we'll do it. <clears throat> um, but you have to know your engagement's gonna tank this month because you're about to share six posts at the same time. And, and so profile visits will hopefully go up, but other than that, your engagement's gonna tank. You have to all be on board with that. So just keep that in mind. How about private groups? Keep killer tweak. Okay, I, heard, I think I heard some keeps. <clears throat> Um, we're gonna say keep as well. Uh, there was actually a reference, I think it was Cameron speaking earlier this afternoon about um, the effectiveness of private groups. It's a great way to add another stage in your funnel for social media. So you're acquiring new followers, then you're nurturing your followers, and you can actually move them into a group where you can kind of uh, intensify that relationship with them, I suppose. Uh, the other great thing about groups is you don't have to be the only one sharing content. <laughs> you're like getting credit for throwing an epic party, but you just hosted it, like, and everybody else brought the fun. You know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, they can be a great tactic for something like that. How about polls? Definitely keep. We love a good poll. And this is behavioral. It's been like, humans have been like this for a really long time. I used to do Cosmo quizzes all the time, and, and this is just the digital version of that. Um, the other thing that's great about polls, it's an awesome way to ask your audience things. So ask them what type of content they want to see. We have used polls for um, clients that are going to release a new product, and it's either going to be like one of two colors. And we actually let the audience vote. They love that stuff, like they're so engaged. And most platforms are doing this now, even, even Twitter is doing it. Give them some credit. How about paid ads? We'll definitely keep our paid ads. Paid ads are personally my favorite thing about social media. Robin, I know you agree. <coughs> um, I, organic content is great, but it's only ever gonna get you so far in 2023, and this is not new and safe for the last five, three to five years, if you're looking at Casey. We have been recommending any client we work with has some kind of paid strategy within it as well. Expecting organic to make you millions of dollars is just not realistic, so use paid as well. How about user-generated content? We'll definitely keep this. If your customers are posting about you, please give them their 15 minutes of fame. It is a win-win, absolutely. It saves, I mean, any content creator will know if you can be like, hey, here's half your content or a third or whatever done to fill in the calendar, they're like, like that saves you so much. And this type of content is also gonna do the best, generally speaking, because it's someone else doing the selling for you. It's really authentic. So highly recommend. What about outbound engagement? Does anyone know what that is? <laughs> okay, we're gonna say keep this. Um, outbound engagement is probably the tactic that I see most overlooked when we start working with a new client. So they're like, yeah, yeah, like I, I check all my DMs. Like I respond in a relatively timely manner and like I sometimes comment back. Like, okay, cool, that's good. Um, and then they're like, yeah, no, I share posts, I broadcast. I'm like, okay, so do you actually spend any time on the app, like watching people's stories, initiating conversations, commenting on other people's stuff? They're like, oh, no, who has time for that? That's just like, I do that on my personal channels. Okay, 
I hear you. Uh, but you're missing a huge part of it if you're doing that. If you are, um, the, the algorithms are, are giving preference to people that are actually using the app as users. So you want to be spending some time with this. Our team is spending generally for a brand a, a, like about five days a week. We're going in for about half an hour to engage as the brand. And by doing that, you are showing your content to so many more people. So think about that. It's also fun. And you can be really strategic with it too. Like people are like, well, who do I comment on? Like go to your competitor's page find their followers and go comment on other stuff, you know? There's lots of ways to do it. <clears throat> How about contests and giveaways? It's not sexy. I know we've seen contests and giveaways for years and years, but definitely keep them. They are still super effective. When it's not broke, don't fix it, right? How about social listening? Okay. Highly recommend. Um, it's, who was just talking about this? Vinod was just talking about this um, in, the other, uh, in the other session that I was at. Social listening can be expensive, I know, so for some people it might be unattainable, but if you have access to it, it is incredible in terms of what it can do and really allows you to get a much better sense of what your audience is saying about you or saying about the industry, what your competitors are up to, etc. How about vanity metrics? Keep, kill, or tweak? Okay, I heard mostly kill. Um, I would tend to agree. I mean, don't stop reporting on vanity metrics in terms of like followers and likes. Sure, they still matter, but like let's be better marketers. Yeah, like let's talk about more than just that. I think that's when clients love us is when we're like, yeah, cool, we have this many followers, but like how much money did we drive this month? Just asking. Like that's more important. They care about that a lot more. Um, so think beyond. How about AI? Okay. I have been to, I think this is my third or fourth social media conference this spring, and AI has been the hottest topic. I know a lot of people are afraid of AI, but the message that I've gotten and the message that we're here to share, I suppose, as well, is I don't think we have a choice. I think AI is here to stay. So we either run scared from it or we learn to embrace it. So I would say spend your time focused on how to use AI, um, how not to use AI, uh, how to just make it a part of what you do every day and not make it something that's going to replace you. How about verification? Keep you a tweak. Okay, we're unsure about this one. And fair enough. I would say tweak. I mean, verification, obviously, it served its purpose. We had, there was a reason for it. If there's imposter accounts, I get it. Uh, now that you can buy it, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's lost some luster, I suppose. $19.99 a month, you can have a blue check mark. I don't know. Uh, if your brand is facing a lot of imposter accounts and it's something that really matters to you, sure, consider it, but would it be top of my list for 2023? No, I don't think so. Okay, and those are my tactics, everybody. Thank you for playing my game. <clears throat> Thank you. I am uh, yeah, super grateful to be here. Um, I'm here as well tomorrow until about noon. And uh, my chief creative officer, Casey, and I are both posting a brain date tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Sorry, it's a little early, but it's the only slot I could get. And I think it's mostly full now, but there might be a couple more spots. So if anyone wants to talk more about any of these, I mean, I think I would say at the end of the day, the message I want to leave you with is there's no, there's no one-size-fits-all approach for 2023 or any brand or at any point in time. So just be really thoughtful about what you're doing. Don't try and do everything. Uh, think about who you're trying to target, what they care about, and, and use that to make your decisions. Now, we do have a, a few minutes if you have any questions. So if you want to throw your hands up, I will come find you. And we'll start over this way as I have finally learned where the camera is. I'm very excited about this. You don't care, but it's very important to me. As we will start, uh, to the guy in the rush shirt. Yeah, it is the guy in the rush shirt. What's your question? Don't make it too hard. So this is from uh, Scott. Twitter, TikTok has a 34% uh, negative review of, of perception of the app. What is it like for other social media networks? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't have that data on me right now, but I want to know the answer to that 